För er som var på keynoten i morse så hörde ni historien om en åttaårig pojke som körde till McDonalds. Och jag inser just att jag ska hålla den här på engelska så att vi börjar om. <laughs> For those of you who were at the keynote this morning, you heard the story about an eight-year-old boy who drove to McDonalds. The story goes that he waited until his parents had fallen asleep. They fell asleep early at 8 p.m. I know the feeling. Um, he put his four-year-old sister in the passenger seat and drove to McDonald's. Using the money he had in his piggy bank, he bought a hamburger in the drive-thru. Luckily, some friends of the family saw them through the window and call the grandparents who came to pick them up. The boy had learned how to drive from a video on YouTube. Now, luckily, he had learned very well. He drove down the street without any dents. But I think this story is a great example of how the world of learning is drastically changing. The way that you're sitting now in a big room, hearing me talk will not be the, pri the, the primary way that we learn in the future. Now, I also have an eight-year-old son. When I left to go here, because I don't live in Sweden anymore, I open up the iPad and there's a note. And I thought, oh, he wrote me a note. And I read the note and it says, to the iPad and mommy. I will miss you very much. I love you and the iPad very much. <laughs> okay, so this also tells us a little bit about the new generation. Uh, for, for them, th they learn as much from the iPad as they do from people around them. And whenever I try to teach him something, oh, you know, the milk comes from a cow. Show me, show me a video. Oh, okay. And, you know, I go and I try, you know, milking a cow. So this is a that people learn today or that young, the younger generation learns. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Ulrika Hedlund, very Swedish. I am Swedish. Uh, I spent a big, big, many, many years at Microsoft, working both in Microsoft Sweden. And for the past 13 years, I've been based in the Middle East. I live in the United Arab Emirates, and I left Microsoft, and I've founded two companies. Um, one company called Business Productivity, which is a consulting company, and a new company uh, that we launched, or that we started this year, which is called Storials, which stands for Story-Based Tutorials. And that's what we, you know, this is what we do, and this is what I'm passionate about, storytelling. But I also love technology, so, you know, having that make between technology and storytelling and being able to do that for a business is really um, a true, true joy. So why are we talking storytelling at a technology conference? I was actually very positively surprised this morning because a lot of it was about storytelling. Even Lorraine talked about, you know, how we're, our brains are, you know, geared to learn. So why storytelling? Well, if you look at the human brain, as you heard Lorraine talk about, we are actually geared to learn things from other people. If you look at how our brain works, we have, as you know, two different parts of our brain. The left part of the brain is all about lo logic. If you see a traditional PowerPoint presentation with items and straight lines, it's our logical brain that triggers. The right hand, the, the right part of our brain is all about our creativity. When we hear music, when we have emotions, when we see pictures, this is the emotional part of our brain. 
But in order to learn, and when we hear stories, we actually combine both sides of our brain. And this is also what triggers learning in a better way. When we learn something, our brain releases dopamine. And this actually works as the save button of the human brain. The more dopamine, the more we remember. So I can guarantee that none of you are going to forget the story about the eight-year-old boy because you've heard the story, you've seen it, and it's been repeated. So repetition is also a way for us to learn. Okay, so we're talking about storytelling, and then we're saying inspire office productivity with storytelling. So you know, how, how do the two combine? Well, first of all, let's start with our lo logical brain. Let's look a little bit at Office 365. So this has been amazing for Microsoft. Uh, I think, you know, none of us here in this room are questioning what a good job Microsoft have been doing of telling the story of all the benefits that you can get from the cloud in Office 365. In general, like a 30% year over year growth. If you look at the stock price of Microsoft, uh, of course, this is not only Office 365, but it's definitely injected by it. Now, my husband sometimes asks me if I did the right thing leaving Microsoft. Uh, I started around here and I left and sold my stock around here. And uh, hmm, guess not. <laughs> so luckily, I'm very passionate about what I do and that makes up for it. Um, so Office 365 really holds the promise of a modern digital workplace where we can work from anywhere on any device. We can collaborate with coworkers and partners and customers. And we can automate processes and it really is amazing and inspiring all the things that we can do. But what does it look like in reality? Many times, users are confused. What's this all about? Sometimes, they have no clue. It's quite interesting. A friend of mine, her husband has a company, very you know, profitable, you know, 14 people. They work in the um, facilities business. And he said, oh, I saw that you're coming to Sweden to you know, talk. Can you come and we have uh, this new version of Office. Office 365. We don't want any training, but could you just come and tell me what it's all about? It's like, okay, do you know what you have? It's like, yeah, we have something called Office 365 E3. I'm like, okay, you're 14 people and you have, off oh, okay, fine. Okay. And I came to talk to them. So they thought they were using, you know, Office 2010, Excel and Word, and now they thought that this was the new version. And they knew nothing about Teams or the cloud or OneDrive or SharePoint. I think they were very disappointed when I came and told them because they thought I would talk about new features in Excel um, because that's the new version of the Office Suite. So it, it's really good because when you go to these Microsoft conferences and we're talking about artificial intelligence and it's so cool and it's so big, but then you come to reality and for many people, it's not about artificial intelligence. It's about you know, getting the spreadsheet to work. So I think it's important for us to really go back and understand what is, what is the situation for our users today. Okay, so what are companies doing? And what are Microsoft partners doing to help? Actually, let's do this. Let's do a raise of hands. So how many of you in here work as a Microsoft partner? Raise your hand, or Microsoft. Okay, how many of you are like customers using Office 365? Okay, so a bit more, more, more than half. Okay, so the question is, you know, what are companies doing about Office 365? Most of the time, when it comes to end user training, nothing. You know, they deploy it, they get the subscriptions, they get the licenses, but then when it really comes to helping their users, a lot of them don't do anything. It's up to users to use it. Now, that's, of course, not everyone. So we have a number of amazing examples of companies that are doing a lot of things. So who was here last year for my talk? Raise some hands. 
Okay, a few of you. So last year, uh, I was here and I was joined on stage uh, by Cecilia from Aviega Group and Göran Vendelius from SAS. And they talked about the program that they were doing internally at SAS about the Make Work Easier. So a transformation program helping their users uh, get more value and use Office 365 in a better way. And uh, Johanna showed this picture that I thought was so good. So I stole it from him and I'm showing it to you again. Um, and it really, you know, pictures what it's all about. So, hey guys, do you want to try this new innovation? Like the wheel, it's good stuff. Like, no, 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 I'm too busy. I'm too busy in, you know, going through email in my inbox. And that's what we face a lot, that people are too busy doing their job, so they don't have time, um, you know, to, to learn, to learn new things. So how do we get people to change? Because it really is about change. This really is about change management and changing behavior. Well, it's, there's no silver bullet. There's no one single answer. There are a lot of things that you have to do. Um, but one of the key things to trigger change is to have people understand why, what's in it for me, and for them to see that value. And we really need to get them motivated and interested. So this is what we work with. Like I said, to drive adoption, there are many things that you have to do. Um, but the part that we focus on heavily is the storytelling part. Okay, so let me show you and then tell you, you know, how we do this. And when I say that we do this, when I'm here today, I'm also talking to you about why you should tell stories. Because the best stories are the ones that are coming from you and your colleagues. You're the ones who know the, the best practices and the success stories of the use cases within your organization. So tell those stories, because those stories are the ones that are going to get others to want to make that change. So I'm talking to you not just about what we're doing, but I'm also trying to convey to you that these are the stories that you should tell and that you should share within your organization in order to trigger change and to get that adoption that you want. So what we did, um, so I've been working, like I said, even when I was working at Microsoft, it was always about storytelling. So I have my fr friend and colleague, Bolinda, he knows we did all these theater things. We did a TV show. It was always about how do we tell stories about technology to make it more, you know, attractive to people. So what we did was we came up with this concept that we called a story-based tutorial. So basically what we did, we took a product say Teams or OneNote, or say what you will. We took the, the, the content of everything that you need to know. We went through, actually, we went through hours and hours of training content. And then we looked at, okay, of all of these features and scenarios and functionalities, what are the most important ones? Like if I had to pick like the top 10, what are the top 10 things that I need to know? We took all of that learning and we put it into 10 minutes. And then we say, okay, we need to, we cannot just have a product, this feature, a product. People don't want to learn that way. Give us the real life scenario. How and why is this being used? Show, I don't know how many of you have been to these tech events where they demo things and they do demo user one, test one, hello world. I'm like, really? Why? Like, what's the benefit? Like, what, what do I get from that? So for us, it's also really important. It needs to be best practices. It needs to be put in context. People, maybe you get, you, maybe you get it. You see something and you can relate hello world to, oh, that's my business process. I understand. But most people don't get it. You need to show it to them. And finally, uh, it's really about focus on what you need to know. We're never going to cover every single feature in every single product, but we focus on what you need to know. So I'm going to show you now. I know it's quite interesting when we say that it's like two hours of content and we put it into 10 minutes, but we also know that people's attention span right now is actually less than a goldfish. So I'm not going to play the 10 minute video 
to you because I know you're not going to watch the whole thing. But if you, um, um, but if you understand the concept, uh, and then I'll tell you what we're doing to make them even shorter. Uh, but this is this is story-based tutorial on teens. With the launch of our new website coming closer, we're extremely busy. A few months back, the ones involved in the project started using teens to work smarter together. To see what's going on, I go to the activity feed where I can see activities in the channels I follow. First, I'll focus on conversations where I have been mentioned. I'll click Filter and select Mentions. I can see a message from Christina where the whole marketing team has been mentioned to provide feedback on our messaging framework. Since I want to spend some time to review it, I'll just like the message to acknowledge it and then click the bookmark icon to save it for later. Next, there's a message from Carlito asking me if I'm okay with the final headshots for the website. I'll write my feedback in the text box and hit enter to send. Next, I remove the mentions filter to see all activities in the channels I'm following. Here I can see that Abdul has liked a message from one of our sales reps who has just signed a deal. I click like to show my support. After reviewing the activity feed, I go to the channels I'm not following to check in on what's happening. Here you get the concept of what a story-based tutorial is. So we look at a day in a life and we mix how we use the tools with how we're, you know, getting to results. So this video we go through, you know, there's a delay of the website. We need to work together. We have an online meeting. Uh, you know, we, we connect from anywhere on the mobile, on, you know, on the different, at, at the end of the day, you know, we've solved the solution because we were able to accelerate results using Teams. Now, like I said, this is a 10 minute tutorial, which is really based to, to teach people something. But before you can teach people something, you need to get them a bit interested. And so this is where we talk about the quick overview video. This is less than two minutes. So this is to, to be used really to, you know, get people's attention. It might be in a newsletter. It might be in a Yammer feed. It might be in, a, you know, a Teams conversation feed. It really is about getting people's attention, kind of like a trailer. It's kind of you're doing like internal promotion to get people to learn. The other thing is that, it's great to have these, you know, story-based tutorials and to show people. But then the next que question comes is like, okay, but how? Like, how do I get from where I am to there? So then we also said that, okay, we need some, you know, traditional step-by-step -step guidance on go here, click here, open up Teams, start a team. So it's a bit like boring, but it really is kind of those, you know, step by step for if you're a beginner and you need to start learning. So for the beginners that need to start with something new. Now, um, like I said, um, we, we produce these. Um, I'm not based in Sweden anymore. However, Sweden really is very far ahead when it comes to consuming this type of content and wanting it and asking for it. Some of our biggest customers are here. And that's why I'm very happy to announce that we have now taken all of the content that we have for all of these different Office 365 scenarios and usage cases and done it uh, for the Swedish market. So let me just give you a taste. Med den mobila Outlook-appen får du snabbt en överblick av dina dagliga aktiviteter och kan enklare hålla din inkorg i trim. Genom en prioriterad inkorg hjälper Outlook dig fokusera på dina viktigaste e-postmeddelanden och du kan enkelt gå igenom din inkorg och arkivera och följa upp på meddelanden genom att svepa med fingret. Med Outlook-appen är det smidigt att schemalägga och boka möten. 
Med hjälp av enkla färgkoder kan du se i kalendern när mötesdeltagare är tillgängliga. I den rika Outlook-applikationen för Windows har du än mer smarta verktyg för att prioritera, sortera och följa upp på e-postmeddelanden. Genom att använda grupper i Outlook kan du delta i gruppkonversationer och ge återkoppling för att öka transparensen inom din organisation och förenkla informationsdelning. Du kan enkelt växla mellan Outlook på din dator, på din mobil eller på webben och lätt känna igen dig tack vare det gemensamma gränssnittet. Genom att ha tillgång till Outlook var du än befinner dig kan du vara mer effektiv och känna dig mer till freds för att ha bättre kontroll på din inkorg. Och då kommer ju frågan att, okej, okay, det här är ju jättebra med material. Men, mm, vi ska inte använda det här, eller ja, vi använder det här. Eller i våran kommunikation, då vill vi att det ska vara med det här. Så att alla, eller många, vill ha en specialanpassning av sitt material. Och att det, ska vara, att det ska kännas som att det här är någonting som är en del av ens egen intern kommunikation. Um, därför så jobbar vi, nu är en fråga, ja. Åh, oh, tack! <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, this is so hard. <laughs> Schizophrenic. Um, yes, so what I was going to say is that the, 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 um, the content that we have cover kind of the, the basic things of Office 365 that you need to be productive. In many cases, organizations want to have their own flavor. They want to have their own look and feel. They want to have their, you know, um, they want to pick and choose between maybe different products or different scenarios. So what we do is that when we produce our content, we make sure that we can reuse as much as, as possible and we can, you know, change it so that we can provide it to customers without them having to pay for the whole production cost. So we're basically uh, regenerating content without the customer, you know, feeling that this is something that's not, you know, 100% made for them. So that's also, and the other thing that's super important is that I showed you this video now on Outlook. For those of you that have already upgraded to 1809 on the Office Pro Plus, you know that there's a new Fluent banner. It looks different. So every time we do a video, we, you know, we're constantly working on redoing them because Office 365 changes all the time. And if organizations need to provide all of this content themselves, whew, I mean, they wouldn't be doing anything else but just creating your own content. So if we can do that for them or for you, and then you can focus on telling the stories that only you can tell that are really about the people and the users that you have within your organization. So uh, what we do is that, again, if you see me standing in front of somewhere, I'm actually not standing there. I'm actually not here. <laughs> it's, um, we, you know, we produce everything in a studio. We use green screen and chroma technology. And this way we can actually make it look like um, we are, you know, in your training room or in your office or somewhere else. So um that's the that's the magic <laughs> so with that magic i also wanted to talk about you know having content is one thing but we really need to get into the insights to know how to target this learning who needs it how are we using office 365 are we paying for these licenses and not using them where are we using them when are we not using them now all of this data of course is there it's available but how do you turn that data into insight and so here i would like to introduce one of our partners uh, altitude 365 and uh, ville come on up on stage i think there is is a, a microphone here i don't know how this works maybe, maybe on <laughs> on hello hello yeah and you can choose if you i didn't i didn't tell you before that this was a session in Thanks english <laughs> You can do it in Swedish if you want. But I wanted you to talk a little bit about how you're using the intelligence of data to really understand where to target uh, this training. And of course, your, your story-based tutorials that we work together on. Uh, yeah, thanks. So. so this may look a bit complex uh, and I will be happy to explain everything to you in booth 40, 
three, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to go into detail about everything here, but what we do basically is we use the data uh, that is in Office 365, uh, all the usage data, who sends emails to, to who, or uh, who is sharing files on OneDrive or whatever. And we use that to target different audience. Uh, now, you, you uh, showed a picture of those guys rolling a, a, a wheelbarrow. Yes. Uh, which, yeah. uh, that's a perfect example where we have, for example, uh, managers who are, you, who are like, they are drowning in their emails. Uh, they, they live in their inboxes, but they never use Teams and they never use Skype. And they would save a lot of time by using just a little bit of those products, sending shorter, shorter, shorter messages in Teams or in Skype. Uh, and that's the kind of insight that we can get from this. And then we can direct uh, these kind of videos to those people, making their lives a, a little bit easier. Uh, and another thing that we can do, you, you showed the, the picture of SAS and their super user mm -hmm. program. Yep. We usually call them champions, and we use that word about as much as we talk about uh, digitalization these days. <laughs> and this is also something that we can find using this report or this information, this, uh, this usage data. Uh, so we can basically look at who is using uh, all these features in OneDrive uh, on a high level. So they're probably a good OneDrive user. They they know how this uh, how this workload is uh, is used. Uh, mm -hmm. What features you can you can uh, use in it, and then we get a list. So so by having seven thousand users, we can dr uh, drill that down to fifty, and then out of those fifty, then we can uh, we can choose which ones are actually our champions for OneDrive or for Teams or for whatever. And that's just really short on two things that you can do uh, with this kind of data. But you can show this live, right? In your of booth? Of course, of course. So the booth number is? 43. F 43. 43. So thank you so much. So please, you know, go there and, and see how you can drill down and, and see these reports. Um, what I love about this and, and the concept is that a few years ago when we started working on kind of Office 365, it was all about the launch, the big bang, the big campaign where you had, you know, this is when we show the video, this is when we invite everyone to an auditorium, this is when we turn on the switch to go to Office 365. You know what? This is not a one-time thing. Going through this transformation is an ongoing journey and something that you need to, you know, have a very, very, um, you know, it needs to be ingrained into your day-to-day -day business. Uh, you have different types of users. You have the champions. They don't need much. They're up and running day one. And then you have the other ones that really are resistant to change and that don't want to. So by having this data and having the insight, you can also then start targeting. And you need to train in many different ways, like I said, these different activities. Different people want learning in different ways. Uh, and that's why, you know, it's, it's not just, it's not a big bang, Office 365. This is really something that you need to, to work on continuously. Uh, it was interesting, I actually, since it was one year ago that I um, um, had Joran speak here at Tech Days, I had lunch with him yesterday. And so I asked him, like, okay, it's been a year uh, since you kind of kicked off your uh, uh, modern workplace with Aviega Group. How is it going now, like year two? of this program and he said like what are the lessons learned and what he said he said number one you need to use a carrot and stick methodology because it doesn't matter how much great content you produce you also need to sometimes you know put that stick in uh, and this in, in different ways. Uh, it might be that you, you know, turn off G drive or H drive or whatever drive you have and force people to go to the cloud. Um, it might be in terms of, you know, training. Uh, it's mandatory. You have to complete this. You have to do these. Um, the other thing he said is that um, something that uh, is good learning is really that it, it takes time. It's great to have these power D dashboards and you're like you know you do something and you go back oh, this, oh has it changed it's like it takes time you cannot expect to have those instant you know increases in in productivity it takes time and the third thing that he said is also that has been very useful for them is that when they target this type of you know activities and one that's very useful is to go to leadership teams 
Um, it could be, you know, the global leadership team, but also to the different business units, to the leadership teams, and introduce teams to the team. Don't you just love the word teams? Um, because it is, it's, it's a unified group. They often want to share information with each other. They want to have constant, you know, conversations. And they don't, they also want to have kind of that transparency that everyone, uh, you know, is invited to meetings no matter, you know, where you are in the world. So he said that also has been very, you know, a, a good, you know, activity to do to really focus on, on the, the leadership. Because then also you get those as advocates uh, working down. Um, those three things in long term. Yeah, so those were the three three things he said. So he said said hi. <laughs> um, so when we're talking about video, uh, and again, this goes back to any type of a video, videos that you do with your, you know, CIO or with your users talking about how they're using Office 365. It could be, you know, uh, tutorials. Maybe you do a specific video on your own, like intranet or on anything. How can you then, you know, deploy these within your organization? Well, there are many different ways that, that you can do this. Um, so one way, and this is the way that that uh, SAS did. They they build like a communication site in Office 365, and then using so if you have that type of license, so E3 or E5 and some others, you have something called Stream, which is a video streaming platform that's part of Office 365. So you can use that as as your kind of you know distribution method, if you will, of having videos, and it's very you know of course well integrated with Office 365. You can you know embed from you know Yammer and use this video in many many different ways, and you get statistics on views, etc. So um, this is you know this is one way to do it. Um, there's one challenge. Uh, and especially that we're facing with this in the type of content that we have. And that is because the content changes all the time. It updates all the time. And for those, how many here have are using stream as a video streaming service? Okay, so about, you know, half. you also know that it works just like YouTube. Every time you have a new version of a video, you have to upload it as a new video. So you lose all of your statistics, you view, you know, the embed code that you've done, you, you lose that. Um, so this is a challenge, especially with content that, you know, it's not a new video, it's just kind of some updates to that video. And also building these communication sites, for some people it might be super easy, but if you look at smaller organizations, just, you know, oh, creating a nice looking communication site, it might not be that easy. Uh, and this is something that Microsoft are aware of as well. Um, earlier this year, in May, um, they introduced something called Microsoft Training Services. But don't remember that name. Let me cross it out. Um, because they changed it. So we'll just go directly to what it's called now. So it's called Custom Learning for Office 365. So this is not out yet. This is something that's in pilot right now. Um, and it will be released uh, end of December, January. So I've been told. We're working with Microsoft um, as a partner to create um, this, you know, to our content as part of it. So what is the custom learning for Office 365? So basically, Microsoft also understands that organizations are creating their own content. Uh, organizations are sometimes using all of the great videos on from Fast Track, from Microsoft, on how to do things, but they're also creating their own or they're using a content provider such as ourselves to help them with content. So content is coming from a lot of different places, but how do we source these, this in a simple way? And also, how do we guide our users? How do we give them different you know, playlists and different steps? And not only video-based learning, you wanna check that knowledge. You wanna make sure that people can answer questions that you check that they've actually learned what it is that you're trying to teach them. So. Custom learning, this is not a new app. You will not find this tile on Office 365. This is basically open source code 
So this is, will be available for everyone to, to download and install in Office 365. But what it is, you can easily customize this. So you can you know, change the, the, the videos, you can change the images, um, you can you know, create your own different types of playlists. So basically it's a framework with web parts uh, and it also enables you to build this custom training journey within your organization. So for instance, here you have start with six simple steps. So here you have, for instance, welcome to Office 365. Here's an, a video, but this is not actually in your uh, in the Office 365 tenant. This is just using embed code and the video is hosted at Microsoft. So when the new version of this video comes, it will automatically be updated. So same thing for us. When we create our content, it would be, you know, the uh, if it's this Outlook video in Swedish on how to use Outlook, it will be the latest version always on that video. Now, larger organizations, they have their own deployment um, cycle. For the web, of course, they don't have a lot to, to you know, say, but if you look at the office client, then they can decide when they roll out different versions. So this is also a way for us to you know, work with the end customer to understand when are you releasing this version of Office? When do you need to have the latest updates, et cetera? But it really helps the distribution of content and makes it a lot easier. So there is a... Um, um, uh, frequently asked questions uh, here you can see the link uh, and it's called custom learning for office 365 um, so that's something that you can uh, look forward to I talked about some of the lessons learned uh, that Yoram from SAS had to share um, this is something that we see over and over and over again Great content, giveaways, gifts, beautiful stuff. Yeah, great. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> the stick. You really need to have that in your organization. So what we're also doing, we're looking at how can we, you know, we, we're doing all of this amazing content for customers and for partners and for how do we make sure that we get this to the users and that they know about it and that they actually learn what we're trying to teach them. So um, we recently signed a partnership with a learning management company uh, called eLearning Force. Now, there are so many learning management systems. For me, this is a new area because I haven't worked with this before, but it really, it's, there's so many. But they're a bit different in the ways that you can actually package content. And a lot of it is a bit also old fashioned where it's, it's um, content that doesn't update very often. It's a bit of a manual process to actually upload and create the content and put it there. So what we need, we need more modern types of way of distributing content since the content changes all of the time. So um, with um, this learning management system is fully integrated into Office 365. Um, so users can get the training and like managers can share the training in lots of different ways, in Teams, in SharePoint, on the mobile, um, and you can easily, you know, okay, oh, here's a new one. So for instance, um, as a manager, we decide we're going to start using Teams. Okay, you know what? You're going to go through this training. It's not a lot. It's micro learning. It's, you know, it takes you a few minutes, but this, this is mandatory. Maybe not as an organization, but as a manager, this is what I want you to do. Um, users, of course, like you heard, my eight-year-old son loves his iPad more than no, no, I shouldn't say that, but definitely misses his mommy's iPad. So you can also consume this video-based tra training and learning from your iPad, from your iPhone, from your Android, whatever type of device that you have. Um, Built-in questions. And the way that we work with our content is we don't ask you like stupid questions like, what is the name of this button? No, we talk, the, the, the questions are related to the learning. So situation-based, when would it be better to use Sway versus PowerPoint if you're telling a, giving a presentation, et cetera. So we look at, you know, when should you use what and why so that you can really test that users have understood um, what it is that we're trying to teach them. 
um, users can go into SharePoint and they can look at their, you know, their dashboard. And I can see these are the ones that I have in progress. Uh, I have a due date. I know when I have need to do them. Ah, but six out of nine courses are completed. Yeah. If I'm a manager, I can go in and look at my team view and I can, oh, sorry. No. Oh. Yeah, sorry. One, wrong. I can go into my team view and I can look at my employees and I can see, okay, Carl, he has of all of these, um, he has uh, completed, you know, seven. Uh, and yeah, that's great. He's completed all seven. And uh, in general, for all of my uh, closest uh, staff, I 92% completion. So it's a way for, you know, managers to see uh, where they are. Um, and as an organization, again, Power BI, everything's in data. You can build these amazing dashboards as an organization to see, okay, where are we in terms of the, the who has consumed the, the training content and whatnot. The one that I skipped was the, the, the certification. So it actually is built in. And again, here we have the Storials branded certifications. But of course, you know, for any organization, you might want to have your own certification. So it's just a way to kind of encourage um, learning and kind of show that, yes, I've, I've made this commitment to learn. Um, of course, as part of this also, users get these annoying <laughs> email notifications that in three days, this is due two days well you can you can put the parameter for how often and how annoying you want to be um, but it is a good way of actually controlling uh, so that uh, that users actually go through this content if you created it and of course uh, here you can also add add your own content so let, just like in a typical you know learning management system um, so like I said in the beginning, Office 365 and taking on the modern digital workplace really is a transformation. And there are many things that need to be done, um, not just videos, not just storytelling. Something that we're doing also as part of this is that we're doing something called a Storials Bootcamp. Um, so we're providing content to our partners um, and to end customers where we package the video-based learning with the quizzes and the material into a teams format. So if you imagine this, you have, you know, 10 people in your team. So you have 10 people, you start a teams session and it could be, you know, one or two hours. We then combine online live meetings with video-based training, with quizzes, with hands-on activities, but you also have that live moderator, not physically in the same room like this, but virtually through Teams. So this is another way to ex expand the reach and to really be able to pinpoint and going back to what Villa showed in terms of finding those people and knowing how to target. Well, then you can put in a boot camp where it's not just video. It's not just, you know, online. It really is that person for Q&A and for guidance. So that is also something that um, we're, we're excited about. Okay, it is... 45 minutes, I have used my time. I'm going to stay here and uh, answer any questions or answers that you might have. Uh, it, do you have a question or you're just raising your... <laughs> Funny. <Yeah. laughs> so um, finally, what can you do? So like I said, the best stories for your employees and for your coworkers are your own stories. These are the ones that they listen to, that they that resonates with them. So spend your time on telling those stories and then let us help you with, you know, stuff that are kind of the generic product-based, you know, storytelling. And also make sure that you get the value out of Office 365. And if you're a partner, make sure that your customer gets the value out of Office 365 because it is an amazing platform. But if you don't use it effectively, then you're actually, you know, paying for something that you're not, you're, you know, paying for the Ferrari and you're just driving Skoda. No offense. Um, please connect with me, uh, with us and with our partners and have a lovely day. And please fill out the evaluation form. Thank you very much.